Hey everybody, it's Nathan Sela from Oakcroft Films with another edition of Autism Actually Speaking. And I got a really special treat for you today. Uh, here we have a um, special guest from uh, Australia, uh, another member of the autism community, and a, uh, a, a new friend of mine. Um, uh, would you please introduce yourself? Hi Nathan, my name's Gary Burge and I'm from Brisbane, Australia and I'm an adult on the autism spectrum, and I was diagnosed by Dr. Tony Atwood in 1998. And it's a pleasure to meet with you, and I'm glad that we are now friends and we are now communicating. So it's, it is a pleasure to be on your video channel this morning, and, and, let's, and I hope we can be able to get spread the positive message out there. Yep, sweet. So, uh, so how old were you when you were first diagnosed? Well, I was born in 1972, but I was 25 going on 26, I think, from, and I was in the last year of university at the University of New England, and I was studying a, a Bachelor of Arts and majoring in politics and sociology. So the last year of university was a, a big, uh, it was a big changing experience for me to be able to be diagnosed and uh, be able to understand what was actually affecting me and how I was, how I was different to other people. When I was diagnosed. Right. So when you were first uh, when you were first diagnosed, like what was your first thought? Like, did you think, um, "Oh my God, this is the end of the world," or did you think, "I'm going to make the most of this," or did you think, um, "Yay, I'm autistic"? Well, when I was first diagnosed, I there was very little known about Asperger's back then, and and even well, there was a bit more known about autism. But the thing that was difficult was with Asperger's syndrome, when I was diagnosed, was nobody else really knew what it was about. So I thought, well, I know now what is affecting me and why I am the way I am. What can I do to be able to better cope in the world, and to be better able to adjust in the world? And at that time, I was in an Asperger's association here in Brisbane. And there was a contact list of members, and I looked through that list to find people that were around my age, and I got in touch with them and said, how about we meet up and we, we form an adult group and not, not so much feel like we're totally isolated with this condition. So that pioneered the very beginning of an adult group here in Brisbane, and <clears throat> I guess what it took me some years to come to terms with having Asperger's syndrome but I had experienced in high school more so a lot of bullying and misunderstanding from an education institution. And I was told virtually that I was a write-off, you know, I was written off as being someone that had no brains or no academic ability at all. And, and so, this was in Australia? Yeah, that was, that was in Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, you, you, uh, you, you wrote a book about, you know, you having autism. Would you like to, um, you know, Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, I wrote a book called I Want to Work an Asperger Story, which I self-published. Um, it has, it did do quite well. It sold some, co I sold some copies, and some copies are in, in libraries, particularly in Australia and New Zealand. There, there have been a few that have been sold overseas, but the ratio isn't as strong. <clears throat> but the book is about my own experiences of having employment. And the book was written in a week. It took me a week to write it, and my father edited it. So it was three weeks in editing. And then it contains a forward from Dr. Tony Atwood, and it talks about my own experiences of having employment and or finding employment and, and knowing what to do to be able to find a job and keep a job, what sort of mechanisms and so forth are available to, which is not very many, to be able to, to obtain employment successfully. And I'm currently working part-time in the university library here in Australia, Brisbane. Interesting. So, um, uh, one of the most common things that I get, like, um, as a mem member of the autism community, like, when I tell people I'm autistic, um, they might say things like, oh, you don't look autistic, but, but one thing that I get a lot is, wow, you're the oldest autistic I've ever met. Like, a lot of people uh, think that autism, you know, when they picture autism, they picture um, you know, kids. They think only kids uh, have Asperger's or autism. Um, they don't realize that we do actually grow up. Uh, what, what would you, what would you say about that? Like, how would you, how would you respond to something like that? I think the the, the, the main 
scenario that's happening at the moment is that there's a higher incidence, higher diagnosis of, of children occurring in, in the autism spectrum. But the biggest difficulty is, is that there's no understanding or awareness of when the scaffolding of children and adolescents, particularly up to the age of 21, disappears because there's no support and structures and there's no uh, uh, services for a uh, adults once they reach 21 and they go over. There's nothing there in, in, adult, in adulthood. And actually, myself and uh, one of the Aspies here in Australia, Ben Wilshire, is working with me and another as and now another adult doing the track tracking. You know Peter Hosking. Ben has tried to look into finding statistics for the high rates of unemployment and suicide and all these sorts of things, and statistics for representing people on the spectrum. And, and there's very very few statistics that ac accurately reflect us because we're a reclusive uh, group of people, and we tend to not always be in the conventional framework of society. So we are underrepresented. Re but I think the biggest challenge is, is to be able to in encourage people to be able to think that autism is a lifelong condition. And it's not a, so much a disability. It's a disability in terms of social skills. But it's an ability because we have a different way of thinking and functioning and we see things outside the box that others don't think. But the simple thing is, to answer your question, is that there needs to be better awareness that beyond 21, Asperger's syndrome and the autism spectrum are a continuum and they don't just disappear in people. Hmm. All right. So um, one, one, one thing that I've responded to in videos before and what I try to talk about like on my, on my Facebook is, you know, the concept of, you know, this is who I am and this is who I like being. Uh, so if you could, like, you know, take a pill or flip a switch and magically not have autism, would you do it? Why or why not? I wouldn't. To answer your question, no, I would not take uh, a pill or, medicine, uh, or, or a cure uh, a remedy because I think that for adults on the autism spectrum, that I, I think having Asper, uh, being Aspie, which is an identity, not a label, is really a great thing because... I connect with other adults and I know like yourself and other adults that I know are wonderful people, really good friends, a really a like-minded approach to, the way, to understanding the world and the challenges we go through. I think, no, I wouldn't want to change something that's in myself. But what I'd like to do is to be able to change people's perspective of what having autism is like and to be able to better enlighten people that autism is not a, a, a broken condition that needs fixing. It's not a condition that we have to be uh, forced to conform to other ways of thinking and functioning. It's a matter of being able to include us and make us equal uh, as people that are not on the autism spectrum. And at the moment, there's still a long way to go to be able to get this up, up to the same standard. So we need to be able to work hard to be able to uh, make things make things better. Uh, we're almost up to 10 minutes, so I'll, uh, I'll ask you one more question. Um, That's so, cool. uh, what do you feel are the, you know, positive implications for autistics in the future? Like, wh think, what do you feel we can, you know, we, you think well, you can achieve? I think the positive things in the future is that I'm glad that I'm able, that I've met with you, Nathan, because I think that you can work with us, work with the autism community, and I currently have other adults I'm in touch with. And you can work with us and we can work to create more awareness and a better understanding of autism. And I think that it's great to be able to communicate with you and to be able to talk like we are because we, we are communicating. Now, the DSM-5 and other manuals say that people on the autism spectrum lack empathy and we have all these so-called problems that we have. But we actually are wanting to overcome these negative stigmas to say that we, we are positive. So I'd like to work with you to be able to raise more awareness and to be able to do um, take on a more positive approach to getting things happening. And I hopefully we can have more regular video conferences like this where we can get things happening. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks a lot for uh, thanks a lot for video chatting with me. Um, hopefully, 
and a lot of people will check out this video. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm Nathan Seelove, and uh, I've just interviewed a truly amazing man. Um, I, you know, have a good day, and uh, keep coming back for more. All right.